Conférence de presse concernant la campagne de vaccination. Welcome to this press conference concerning the vaccination campaign. Alors, le ministre de la Santé et des Services sociaux. Health Minister, Mr. Christian Dubé, will make opening remarks on the vaccination campaign, and he is with the National Public Health Director, Dr. Horatio Arruda, and the director of the vaccination campaign against COVID-19 in Quebec, Mr. Daniel Paré. Without further ado, Mr. Dubé. Thank you very much, Marjorie. Dr. Arruda, Daniel Paré, hello. Some good news to begin on the vaccination campaign, but first I would like to say that it's one of our first days once again where we've got no case, we've got no cases or deaths in our CHSLDs. So if we go back a year ago, it's quite an improvement. As of today, thanks to the work that was done by Daniel and his team, it's close to 7 million doses that have been administered in Quebec up until now, including 1 million second doses already. So we're already very close to 14 percent of the population that has received two doses. So overall, I think that the situation is going quite well. But I would also like to congratulate younger people who mobilize themselves to get vaccinated. As of today, 71 percent of the 12 to 17-year-olds have received their first dose or have made an appointment. We still have a big week to do with them. And if we want to create a bit of competition, they have largely surpassed the 18 to 39-year-olds. The reason why I refer to this, and that is one of the important points today on which, with Dr. Arruda and Mr. Paré, we want to insist. For the 18 to 39-year-olds, and, and for the past few days I've mentioned this often, we've got approximately 170,000 people who are missing in that category, in the 18 to 39-year-olds, so the four age groups, to reach a 75 percent. And what that means in very clear terms is that in these four categories, there is one Quebecer out of three who is not vaccinated or who hasn't yet made an appointment. And I think that's a lot. And we have to continue to go get the first dose so that we can reach our targets, so that we can have better collective immunity before the fall, even if the campaign for the second dose has already begun. So I would ask for some efforts. If you know anybody between 18 and 30, 39 years of age who perhaps is sharing their fear, you can ask them, why don't they want to get vaccinated? Well, just listen up, because I think that in the next few days we can go reach them. In 170,000 people, we can vaccinate that in two days. That's just to give you an idea. If we can convince this age category, it's going to make a huge difference when we get to September. Now, in the good news as well, the whole question of the moving up of the AstraZenecas and Modernas. If we go back not even 10 days ago, we had announced the move up of appointments for Pfizer. A lot of people were disappointed because they said, why can't we move up Astra or Moderna. Now, for these second doses, what we are waiting was to have more vaccines. And the good news is that they have come in. And here's what we'll do. With the latest deliveries of vaccines or the confirmations of deliveries, because we are waiting for these confirmations from the federal government, we can announce this good news that people who were vaccinated with AstraZeneca and or Moderna can now move up their second dose. The interval in this case also goes from 16 weeks to 8 weeks. And I believe that essentially, and Danielle can give you more details on this, we're talking about 500,000 additional doses and expected that came from Moderna, which gives us a lot of flexibility. So as of today, the people 50 and up who have received AstraZeneca or Moderna will be able to move up their appointments on Click Santé. And for those who are in front of their screens, go see it's well indicated, second dose, and you can go to move up your appointment, you're, bit, you're able to do it yourself. Now for the other age groups, because I said that we're at 50 and up, for the other age groups, well, you will have to wait 
your eight weeks as well and the age groups that will start tomorrow, for example, 40, you know, 45 to 50 and 40 to 45, as was the case for Pfizer. Now, it's the same thing for requests for those who were vaccinated in the pharmacy. And I would ask you to insist, because we had a few, a few calls from the poor pharmacists who got a lot of phone calls. And now that Daniel, we've got Daniel Paré with the people from Click Santé who have done incredible work over the past few weeks, you can now go change your appointment in the pharmacy. You don't have to call the pharmacy. You can do it directly on the Click Santé website. Now, the third point for me, which is just as important, is the alternative to AstraZeneca vaccines. For the people who have received AstraZeneca, but who want to change your vaccine, so you can now have the flexibility. And once again, it's thanks to the fact that we have received more uh, mRNA vaccines. For your second dose, you can replace AstraZeneca by another type of vaccine, the mRNA vaccine. mRNA is either Moderna or Pfizer. These people have to go on Click Santé once again for their second dose. Now, I'll be clear, for logistical reasons, there will always be in the vaccination sites either Pfizer or Moderna that will be available for these people. But I will let Dr. Dr. Ruda answer the questions, but these two vaccines are equivalent. Same protection, but for logistical reasons, we can't have Pfizer and Moderna everywhere. So we will give you, so a decision will be made on site. And it's important to say this because we continue to vaccinate people who want to have the AstraZeneca as a second dose, and this will be possible. The sites are clearly identified on Click Santé. A more technical point that I would like to bring up, but that will become important for next steps, is the whole question of having received your vaccine proof. I told you last time that we were trying to find find a way to see how we could reach around 6 million people who have received their first dose. But for the people who haven't received it, what we have put in place as of tomorrow, we will have a portal, a portal which will allow you to download your vaccine proof yourself. And that is available, thanks again, to Danielle's team. Now, it is possible. And unfortunately, when uh, we are, when things are moving this quickly and with all the little IT problems that we can have, there are some people who even with the portal tomorrow will not be able to download their vaccine proof. The reason is very simple, and I'll explain it, and it's important to understand, is that when we did the registration in the vaccination center, often we had we didn't have enough information on the on what we call the criteria that were required and that we had to fill out. And we find ourselves in certain situations when you enter your name and your Medicare card number on the site, well, the computer doesn't recognize you because they say, oh, that's not the right phone number or it's not the right email address. So we don't want to take any chances and send the confirmation to somebody that we're not sure of. So what we're asking of people is to make an appointment. If you cannot get on the portal, make an appointment in a vaccination center to make the corrections. And I'm repeating myself, it is not possible to make the corrections yourself because, once again, we do not want people to use this portal to use it in an inappropriate manner. But to validate that it's the right person, we believe that it's preferable for you to go, if you're not able to uh, to make the appointment yourself, go to a an appointment center. The good news is that once you will go to the vaccination site to make these corrections, email, telephone number, et cetera, well, you will be able to get your second dose. So you will not be going there for nothing. I invite people to quickly 
go get their vaccine proof because that is what will allow us after we've made the adjustments that I just mentioned to be able to get the information on all Quebecers and we will be able to go to the next step because for us these modifications the quicker we can make them the more we will be able to and, and later I'll answer your questions but but more we'll be able to create a link between the vaccine proof that will be available we've already sent more than 4 million QR codes, but once we will have settled the rest of the population, well, obviously, like I've always said, the first use of the QR code for this, of this vaccine proof will be uh, used for the vaccine passport, the work that we're doing with the federal government for advantages like uh, isolation when you travel and all that, but I'll answer your specific questions later if you have any. In conclusion, at the beginning of this summer, as I've said earlier, we can see that the situation has improved. But I want to be prudent. We can't forget that the virus is still present and that the variants are still present. And not just in Europe, as we've seen in the UK, but they're in Ontario. And I think that, and they're in Quebec, perhaps. The incidence is not as great, but still, we are not immune from an increase in cases in the fall. I want to reassure the population, yes, we are following the situation of variants in other countries, but there is one thing that is for sure, and that is that vaccination is the solution. And I'm repeating myself, if you know somebody around you who is not vaccinated, we all have a collective duty to encourage them to get vaccinated. And in fact, I would summarize by saying that vaccination is an individual effort that we must make for a collective result. Thank you very much. And we'll take your questions. Débuter la période de questions, j'inviterai les médias euh, francophones dans la salle à euh, aller au micro. Donc, c'est questions et sous-questions par média. S'il vous plaît, précisez votre nom et votre média. Bonjour, Philippe Bonneville du 98. Question. Monsieur Zubé and Arruda, you haven't talked about the Montreal Canadiens. A lot of people are wondering the next game in Montreal is in a bit more than 72 hours. Where are you? What are you thinking about? Has a decision been made? And in what direction are we headed? The answer is that a decision has not been made yet. We are still working on it. This morning we had discussions with Dr. Arruda and with the Premier. And uh, we should have a decision in the next few hours, but I will let public health do the work that remains to be done. But we will make a decision. Another question on vaccination. We're vaccinating approximately 80, 90,000 people a day on average currently. Mr. Zubé, is that our cruising speed? Will it continue at this pace? Is that satisfactory to you? Or should we expect that since there are millions of doses coming in, do you believe or do you hope that during the summer there will be a lot more people vaccinated on a daily basis or will it remain stable? Obviously, we've got the capacity to vaccinate. We've seen this already more than 100,000 people every day. But we need three things to be able to vaccinate. The first thing is the doses. We have doses but they don't come in the millions. Now we've got good news with Moderna and we should be able to increase our capacity. But we also need people who show up, who choose to get their first dose, to get their second dose. And with the strategy that we're announcing today uh, to move up some appointments, and that will be done throughout the whole summer. If I take uh, Pfizer vaccines every week, they come in. So, but yes, our interest is to vaccinate as quickly as possible so that we can come back to our daily activities by the end of August. What's our capacity? You say that you can increase the capacity, but what is our capacity? How many people could we vaccinate in a day if the three factors were there? 100,000 is a good number. And the reason why I'm not more specific than that is that we've got some partners, we've got uh, industry partners, we've got partners in the pharmacies. So once again, uh, when I add that to the healthcare network, well, these are 
entreprises qui peuvent vacciner des gens. You know, these are three big organizations that can vaccinate people, so we can easily reach 100, 110,000. Merci. Oui, bonjour, Coralie. La Question. Currently, vaccination for the second doses should be open for Moderna and AstraZeneca, but a lot of people are saying that they've got problems on the Click Santé platform. Will that be changed in the next few hours or the next few minutes? Yes, we're conscious of this, that either they have errors in identification and also with the appointments. Some appointments are not yet available. and. Yes, so these issues will be settled over the next few days and weeks. But what we have to know is that our strategy to move up the second dose, these are additional vaccines. We will always honor our second appointments. That is our first priority. We will always keep the capacity to give first appointments. Mr. Zubay has mentioned it with certain age groups. And it's the balance between what we have received and what we must ensure as service that is offered in the walk-in clinic. So I invite citizens every week to go see on the Click Santé portal to see where the uh, added appointments, because it's not because we open something up today for an age group that it's over. It is the beginning only. And that service will be offered all summer. Most of the new cases of COVID-19 are in people who were not vaccinated. How will we encourage them to go get vaccinated? You were talking about vaccine proof. Will there be certain privileges once we have our vaccine proof? I think that the first privilege for me is to be able to travel. And I think that being able to work as we do now with the federal government in order to come to use vaccine proof for a vaccine passport eventually, that is our main objective. So that people who already have their second dose, it doesn't take anything away from people who haven't had it yet, but they would have an advantage. For example, we are in discussions with the federal. People currently who come back from travel must quarantine at the hotel and have uh, proof of a negative test. But once we are able to demonstrate that we have vaccine proof that we've been vaccinated twice with approved vaccines, well, at least we can remove the mandatory quarantine in a hotel. So these are the types of discussions that we are having with the federal government. And that is why I'm repeating myself. Young people and older people as well should quickly go on the portal that we're putting at their disposal as of tomorrow to go make the last corrections and make sure that the right email is there, etc., so that we can communicate with them once we have this agreement with the federal government. Perhaps there will be other advantages later, but for the time being, that's the one that we're emphasizing because we need to finalize the portal correctly. Thank you. Donc, le premier journaliste, ce sera Alain Laforêt de TVA Nouvelle. Question. Monsieur Laforêt. Monsieur Laforêt. Alors, nous allons maintenant passer à Véronique Prince de Radio-Canada. Next question. Est-ce que... Euh, est que... vous Oui, M. Laforêt. Bon, vive la technologie. Ça fonctionne? That's technology. It works as well as Click, as click Santé. Alors, okay. For certain people. I was saying the members of the community covered stop. You saw this morning there was a letter in the newspapers where there's around 20 co-signatories and they say that, yes, things are going well now, but they are very afraid of what's coming in the fall, and they're asking for concrete action on your part, and that is to slow down the reopening or to put some measures so that we don't end up in a fourth wave. What do you answer to them? I can begin, but I would like Dr. Arruda to, to answer this question. I will tell you that I make a big difference between what we can do currently and how we must be ready for the fall. I said this earlier. We can have 
a deconfinement today that takes into account the situation in which we are, the number of cases, things are going well, school is finishing in a few days. I think that we can say that things are going well and that Quebecers deserve some lifting of measures. But one thing is for sure, Mr. Laforet, and that is something that, and that is why I talked about individual efforts for collective success. Right now, we must go get vaccinated. In the period that we've got now, if we don't want to have this risk of a fourth wave, given the possible variants, well, we must vaccinate now in the window of opportunity that we've got, June, July, and August. So if people tell us, well, perhaps we're reopening too quickly, and if we reopen too slowly, we'd be told that we're too slow. I'm not there. We are following public health. I would like Horatio uh, to give some examples of discussions that we've got every day. But there's one thing that I do know. Our work is to vaccinate people to make sure that we have the highest rate of vaccination in the world by the 31st of August. That's what we're working on. I would add... But at the same time, I want to reiterate what you've said, Mr. Minister. I think that what is good news is when people have two doses of the vaccine, we have better protection against the transmission, even with the new variants. So I think that if we've got one action to undertake, it is that one. We are continuing to monitor the variants in Quebec. We will try to act adequately when it comes to border measures, perhaps. And I think that if there's a time to deconfine or to give some oxygen to Quebecers, it's now. Uh, cases are going down. And that doesn't mean that we're not keeping an eye on things and we think that everybody's going to start to party, et cetera. But we, if there's one thing, in my opinion, that is important is that we have good herd immunity with two doses. If ever there's a new variant, of course, we'll have an increase in cases. You know, last year in July, there was an increase after the holidays. There was an increase in August, and then it accelerated. And there might be a fourth wave, but its impact, in my opinion, will depend on our vaccine coverage. So if there is one message to take away today, get vaccinated with your second dose before the end of the summer. I think the vaccines will be available. There is no reason to not get vaccinated, and that is an action that will allow us to keep the freedoms that we have given ourselves this summer and to not come back to total confinement. Anyways, if we did total confinement once again, or if we asked Quebecers to not take advantage of the summer, nobody would follow us. People are already probably doing more than what we're recommending. We're asking people to, recommend, to, to respect the measures. But there was one thing I was talking about, hand washing and mask wearing and physical distancing. Now what I am telling you, my message for you is get vaccinated. Two doses. One is not enough. Two doses. Follow-up question. You're talking about the two doses. The Delta variant, we're, we're at 35, 21 in Montreal. For the efficacy of the Pfizer vaccine, the first dose is 33 percent, second dose 83 percent. AstraZeneca, half a million people have been vaccinated, 33 percent for the first dose, second dose. 61 percent. What is the interest of getting a second AstraZeneca dose? Whereas we know that possibly in the fall or in the winter, the Delta variant will be dominant here in Quebec. We have to understand that herd immunity will add protection because protection is never 100 percent. There's always it's never at 100 percent. So now these are preliminary studies. There's a, an mRNA a vaccine may have a certain advantage versus the AstraZeneca, but not necessarily significant. But what is very clear is that one dose, even with Pfizer, even with Moderna, even with AstraZeneca, only gives 33 percent, which is not enough in terms of community protection. So the important thing is to get two doses. That's what I'm telling you. And then afterwards, the choices of vaccines, well, people can decide for themselves. As we have said, we will offer the vaccine that people want to have in the category, because now I'm telling you that Moderna and Pfizer are equivalent. People need to understand that. If people don't want to have AstraZeneca for whatever reasons, 
we will offer either Moderna or Pfizer. Merci. Alors, nous avons un média au micro. Est-ce que c'est un francophone? Parfait. Nous allons maintenant euh, aller avec euh, Véronique Prince de Radio-Canada, toujours en ligne. Question. Oui, bonjour. Hello. Euh, When I look at the green levels, because as of next week, on Monday, there are new regions which will be going to the green alert level, and in principle, the 25th of June, it should be every region of Quebec. And when I look at the green level, our gatherings are still a maximum of 10 people. The green level will last how long? Is it all summer? Or could there be, or could the color codes disappear at some point in the summer? Eventually, we will come back to what we call blue, blue like paradise or like the sky, where it'll be, there will be fewer measures. And we don't believe that we'll do this before the beginning of the fall or the fall, because we really need people to have two doses. However, I don't want to jump any steps. There will be certain modifications in the different color levels, particularly yellow and green which will be announced, all of this by taking into account the epidemiology. Now, the numbers are going well, they're decreasing a bit, and I want to tell you that we will probably observe a few increases, marginal, but there might be some outbreaks in certain schools, etc. With the, the summer vacation, there will be more contacts. So I don't know where you get your information, but there will be perhaps some adjustments that will be made specifically when it comes to gatherings, indoor gatherings or outdoor gatherings, particularly outside. The summer is a beautiful season to be outside. Par souci d'équité, c'est vraiment question et sous-question par média. Alors, oui, je serais rendue à ma sous-question. En fait, oui. euh, j'ai juste posé une question. Euh, je voudrais en fait euh, poursuivre là-dessus. Donc, now, what we are understanding is, at some point in the summer, there could be a broader deconfinement with it, the green and yellow alert levels, so we could see more people. That's what we're understanding. That's what you're understanding. <laughs> and that is what I've said, essentially. But without going into details, we have to wait for the work to be completed, but we are working on this. Merci. Nous allons maintenant passer à Mylène Crête du journal Le Devoir. Question. Bonjour. Hello. I wanted to know, concerning Canadians' games and authorizing more than 2,500 people at the Bell Centre, you've said, Mr. Dubé, that the decision would be rendered soon. I was wondering, what other criteria that would make you allow a greater number of people at the game? What we've discussed with public health, and that is why we will wait uh, until the decision is rendered, but there were, since the first decisions with the thresholds that were established, and it's not just for the Canadians, there was an evolution that was quite positive of the situation. So what we have asked public health is to tell us, with the information that we've got versus what we had as information a few weeks ago, are there possible adjustments? And that is what the Premier has asked. But we have given all the time necessary to public health so that they can look at all of the data and not just for the Montreal Canadians. And that is why I prefer that we wait and let public health do the work it needs to do. And we want to make the decision correctly with public health. So as soon as these analyses are completed, if there are adjustments to be made, we will make them, but for all the sectors. My second question is for Dr. Arruda. When it comes to the Delta variant, what are the forecasts up until now? It's a variant that is spreading in the UK and in China, so I was wondering what are the expectations in Quebec? We know that it's a variant that is 33 percent more contagious, with an increase in hospitalizations, at least 33 percent, an increase in 33 percent hospitalizations. As to deaths, the data is not confirmed yet, but what we do know is that when people have two doses, we decrease the rate of attack, 
With one dose, it's only 33 percent. With two doses, it's much more. So all of this will depend, firstly, on the vaccine coverage. We will ask, of course, our institute to provide us with uh, scenarios, with forecasts on the basis of our epidemiology, the RT that we've attained, the vaccine coverage to see. But obviously, we can find ourselves in a situation where, because of vaccine coverage with two doses is not high enough, we could have a wave. Our objective is, to, you know, to stop the variant from coming in completely is utopic. You know, we got the UK variant that came in and it was transmitted. We had a bit of South Africa, however, it wasn't transmitted. The Indian variant seems to be uh, more contagious. So there's some in Ontario right next door. I think it's going to be very important in our interventions when we manage cases and contacts, we must intervene to stop the contagion or the transmission of the variant. So we'll follow it very closely. But I think that with the transmission that we currently have, the number of cases, we are relative, we have been relatively spared, but everything can change with the increase of contacts and back to school in August. And once again, we are reopening, we're keeping an eye on all of this, and we get vaccinated two doses. Merci. Nous allons maintenant passer à Stéphanie Marin de la Presse canadienne. Question. Bonjour à tous les trois. Hello. I would like to have uh, more information for people who got AstraZeneca as a first dose, but who want to have another vaccine for their second dose. Did I understand well, the way to proceed is they cannot ask for another vaccine directly on Clic Santé, but they must go to a vaccination site with their appointment for AstraZeneca as a second dose and then ask on site for another vaccine? Is that what's happening? A correction. As of today, people who have received AstraZeneca can make an appointment on Clic Santé if there are appointments available to move up their appointment. And on site, we will be able to offer an mRNA if that's what the citizen wants. And we are working with our partner Clic Santé in order to make this more visible directly in the system, but it's not yet available for the time being. So for the time being, you got an AstraZeneca, you want to move up your dose, but even if you want to have your second AstraZeneca dose, there will be some appointments available for this. Okay. My second question is on the eight-week delay between the first dose and the second dose. Could there be some exceptions, for example, for students, Quebec students, who are abroad and who are not back in the country this summer uh, long enough and they're not here for the eight weeks, would it be possible to move up their second dose by a week or two as, a, as an exception? We have to understand that the vaccine is approved. You're talking about a Pfizer or Moderna type of vaccine. It's approved for 28 days. So somebody who receives it after 28 days, it's not ideal for the second dose, yes. It's not ideal, but it's possible. And just an element that I want to mention, because people see the eight weeks and it's as if they, if they don't have it at eight weeks, it's going to be terrible. The efficacy continues to increase up to 12 weeks. At eight weeks, it's already very, very good. But there is no... But, you know, it's not uh, set in stone. If somebody don't have their appointment at eight weeks, they might have it at nine or at ten. It's going to be just as good, especially since the virus is not circulating as much as usual. But for some students who have specific situations or the risk of exposure outside of the country might be higher than the gains that they could have by delaying their vaccines, well, it could be offered to them as soon as they've uh, attained 21 or 28 days, depending on the vaccine. Question. Bonjour, messieurs. Hello. Um, Monsieur Dubé, Mr. Dubé, I'd like to come back to the rate of vaccination for the 18 to 34 year olds where you've got some difficulty. I would like to know if you get the impression that you've tried everything. And if you consider, for example, there was, we talked about uh, night vaccination, it was even tested in Quebec in April, if I'm not mistaken. Is this still part of your discussions? There is nothing that's off the table right now, I must tell you. We have asked 
We have asked our people in communications to make an effort, and I think that they have made quite the effort over the past 10 days to reach these people. Through vaccination, I would like to let Danielle answer, but I think that I think that it's through the peers. We talked about this quite a bit. When I say, and I don't want to be ageist here, because that works for younger people as well as older people, so I want to be careful in the way that I say this. But among them, younger people, they're together. And I've heard many young people who have told me, well, listen, I feel a little bit embarrassed going to convince my friend uh, to get vaccinated because I got vaccinated. Well, I think that we can't be shy. I understand that we have to leave the choice up to people. But now we are truly at the end of the process. And I think that the best person to convince another person is a peer, is somebody who will live with them over the next few weeks and months. And I'm saying this this summer. That's when it's happening. And I'm sorry for repeating myself again, but we've got a few weeks left before the end of June so that somebody who gets vaccinated, gets her first dose, has the time to get their eight weeks which is the ideal time that Dr. Arruda mentioned, to get their second dose. So I have no problem repeating that now is the time. Now the 18 to 34-year-olds must get vaccinated now with their first dose. And I will tell you, and I'm repeating myself, I was reading an article yesterday, and the writer was impressive. He moved up his second appointment, and he was told that there was a, an appointment available that same afternoon. I'm telling you, we have vaccines. We're very lucky. This is something that we didn't have a few months ago. And now you can call, you can make an appointment, and in the day or the next day, that quickly, you can get vaccinated. And what's even better, we've got some walk-ins, which we did not have before. So for this age category, if you are able to convince a friend just, just one, that's what we need to do over the next few weeks. And we will continue to surprise you. There are other things that are in discussions to go reach the last, last yes. tougher cases. Mr. Dubé, I would like to come back to well, let's say we project ourselves in time a little bit, but if there was a reconfinement, and you've never excluded this, if there was a reconfinement because of a fourth wave, what would it mean for people who are vaccinated with two doses for over three weeks? Would there be confinement, like a two-tier confinement system? Well, I think, Mr. Carabin, I respect you quite a bit, but that's a bit too hypothetical what you're asking today. You know, I'm from the old school. I'm, we all know, you know, the, the hare and the tortoise uh, story. Well, let's be the turtle. Let's be the tortoise. We've got the summer to work. We've got the summer to get vaccinated. And I think that we can look at the situation that we have put in place. I am impressed. We have vaccinated 6 million doses. That's above our objectives for the first dose, even if we're missing a few categories. The second dose, we've already got 1 million vaccines. We're at 14 percent of the population, 1 percent a day. That's what we're doing right now. When we vaccinated 100,000 people, which was the case over the past three to four days, that's approximately 30,000 people that we do for the first dose and 60,000 for the second dose. So at 60,000 people a day, we are able to do approximately 1 percent of the population that we're aiming for, right, the population of 12 and up. So that would mean that if we continue to have the support of the population of Quebec that we've had up until now, that means that by the end of August, We've got our vaccination populated twice. So I think these scenarios are hypothetical scenarios. Once we get back to closer to the fall, we can talk about that. And, but I'm telling you, and Dr. Arruda was very clear, we must get vaccinated to have the best immunity possible before the fall. Question. I would like to know, do we have the data on where these young people are? Is it in the Greater Montreal region? Is there a key sector where we have to go reach them? I would tell you, 
in Greater Montreal, Montreal and Laval, it's about two thirds of the cases. And concerning the green zones, so Bassalara, Lac Saint Jean, Mauricie, Centre du Québec. How do we determine this, and why is there no change for the national capital, for example, where the cases are almost at zero? Well, there were some discussions. You know, there's a number of cases. That's one element that we take into account, and. And things are going well when it comes to cases and hospitalizations, etc. But there was a very quick movement, an increase in Quebec, which makes resources a little bit more prudent. And also, given the population mass that is greater than in other regions that have gone to green, the forecast, uh, well, we prefer to wait another week. So it's a, a judgment on the basis of data and the clinical impressions of our public health directors. Merci. Nous allons maintenant donner la parole à Patrick Pellerose du Journal de Québec. Question. Oui, bonjour à tous. Hello. My question is, is for Dr. Ruda. Now, the spectators, for the Canadians game, I want to know, can you explain a little bit what is the thought process that's ongoing? What factors are you evaluating right now to make a decision? And also, what types of scenarios are being studied? Are we thinking about uh, significantly increasing the number of spectators, perhaps 50%? Uh, or as our minister said, the discussions are not finished yet. I would tell you that it's a mix of analyses of scenarios. Of course, what we're doing, if I say at the macro level, must be coherent with the other sectors of activity for gatherings indoors and outdoors. It must respect certain approaches that we have decided to have up until now, particularly indoors with a separate uh, uh, in and outdoors so that we don't uh, mix up the groups of 250 that we have determined. So I would uh, stick to that for now. And I will let the government, once we finish our discussions, they will make the announcements that are required. Mr. Dubé, on the question of the vaccine proof of passport, Children, do, are children already getting the vaccine proof? I heard about uh, parents who said that for their children they hadn't received anything yet. Well, actually, that is why we must do the update of the portal, but perhaps uh, Danielle can speak to this. Yes, and listen, uh, I haven't received uh, my vaccine proof either, so it's possible that there were some identification errors on Click Santé. And when it comes to vaccination in schools, well, you know, in many cases, we go there, so they're not registered yet. And that's why it's necessary to have a portal where families and parents can go download their proof of vaccination, and that service will be available very soon. Question. Bonjour. Um, Hello. Mr. Paré, I'd like to hear. Can you give us a quick update on the school vaccination campaign? It's been more than a week. How is it going? Is it going well? Is it going very well or not so well? Well, by interim, we still have a big week ahead of us. Things are going very well. And I think that Mr. Dubé mentioned this earlier. We are at 71 percent right now, and it's continuing. In my communications with the health care network as well as with the Ministry of Education, I am told that it's going well. They, they've been having wonderful experiences. Young people are there, and they're on board, so congratulations. We had some hypotheses, but I'm telling you, it goes beyond our expectations for the time being. And this will allow us to increase our numbers for all the age groups, and that will help us protect ourselves so that we can come back to normal life as quickly as possible. A question for Mr. Zubé. What do you answer, Mr. Minister, to the people who felt a little bit pushed to get the AstraZeneca in April, and now, of course, they'll be able to change it, but they felt like they were had a little bit, and they said, well, I could have waited another week or two. 
Je l'ai déjà, j'ai déjà répondu. I've already answered that question, but I am pleased to repeat myself. The situation that we experienced in February and March, when we didn't have any vaccines, I remember the discussions that we had with Daniel Paré, and we said that we had no choice. Dr. Arruda made decisions that were very difficult to not give the second dose in the delays that were set because we preferred to vaccinate as many people as possible. And I think that had a very positive impact on the coverage. Now, the people who got AstraZeneca, to answer your question, at that time, did they protect themselves adequately? The answer is yes. And I think that it's very difficult, two, three, four months later, to say, should we have made a different decision? I think that all of those who were vaccinated, over 500,000 people who were vaccinated with AstraZeneca, I, I have been, and several of my colleagues as well, and I consider myself adequately vaccinated. Vaccinated. I'm very pleased. But I also think that now the good news is that we have a choice. We always said that with AstraZeneca, what we wanted was for people to have to make an informed decision. They made the decision to have a quicker vaccine. We were very clear at the time. And now that we have additional vaccines, mRNA vaccines, either Pfizer or Moderna, we are giving people the choice. They can continue. They can go get their second dose with Astra or they can change to an mRNA. We will continue to provide this choice so that people can make the best decision possible for themselves. If you'll allow me, I will add, I am convinced that of the 500,000 people who got the AstraZeneca vaccine, some would have had COVID, some would have been hospitalized, and probably some would have died. So we have to put things in perspective, because at the time we offered this vaccine, we didn't have all the other vaccines, and everybody in public health is saying we're better to get one vaccine than not having any vaccine at all. And then the people can make a choice, and it was not, we did not fool anybody, even if they got that, per, that perception. That was not the intention at all. It was to save lives. And I think that that is the case. We don't know who was saved. But I remain convinced of this, that we saved some people. And if I had to make a decision, I would make the same decision. Thank you. So we will now go to the English questions. S'il vous plaît, précisez votre nom et votre média. Uh, yes, good afternoon, uh, Jason Magder with the Montreal Gazette. Um, I want to ask you, Mr. Dubé, about uh, the famous 18 to 34 age group. Uh, why is it so important for them to be vaccinated? Are, are we waiting for, essentially, is all of Quebec waiting for them to get vaccinated in order to uh, deconfine or said otherwise? Uh, does it delay any more the deconfinement if, if they are not vaccinated? Well, I don't think we are there yet to see the real implication of this category of not being at the minimum that we impose ourselves of 75% for each of those categories. But I think if we, if we go, and I had this discussion with the ENSPQ this morning and the, with Horacio, is that when we look at um, the immunity in general, uh, we look at the global number. Do we have uh, 60%, 65%, 70% immunity? The goal is to be between 65 and 75% of immunity. The, the issue, especially when we deal with uh, 18 to 35, 40, those are the ones who have the most contacts. Okay? So... I think it's important, and you know how we have been talking in the last 15 months about reducing the number of contacts. And if there was to be a negative impact of the variant in September, which is possible, it's happening in UK, it's happening in Ontario, I think we need to have all those categories, especially those that move, those are young people, those are people that have an active life. This is very important that we ask them to be at least at this 75%. Will that have an impact on deconfining? I hope not, but it could have an impact on the number of cases in the fall. So I think it's, to me, important that we re reiterate this message many times. I know it's boring 
for those that have accepted to be vaccinated. But I think this category, their friends, their parents should tell them if you you can do it for yourself or you can do it for the people you love around you. I'm, I'm guessing you're hoping that your job is going to become boring at one point, but it's not, not quite happening. Oh, it's not, not, quite the it's case not yet. boring at all. <laughs> be be yeah. reassured that this is not boring, no. Um, uh, but, so, but leading uh, on, on the tail of that, um, when does it become, uh, I guess, when we, when, we, when we reach that goal, or if we reach that goal, say 75% of Quebecers are vaccinated, and then the, the Delta variant does come in, let's say, in September, uh, does it become less of, big, of a big deal if we have that, that collective immunity in place? And at that point, do we make decisions on uh, confinement based on... I'll, actually, I'll back up a little bit. Uh, we know that when you're fully vaccinated, you don't get severely hospitalized. There's a much lower uh, rate of hospitalization, much lower rate of death. Does that take into account, will that be taken oh, into sure account that. when the Delta variant, if the Delta yeah, variant and, arrives? And, and, uh, and will we not have as, as strict confinement measures when we see higher cases, well, for that, 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 I think that's, I appreciate your question very much because this is the reason we vaccinate. Because if we compare to the same time last year, remember last year, end of June, mid of June, 100 cases per day, and we were like, um, all Quebecers going into the holidays and saying, let's have a nice summer, we're okay. What happened? Second wave on the way back. The difference this year is vaccination. We, we are at the same place mid-June as we were last summer. The big, the big advantage is to have the vaccination, which we didn't have last summer. So when we understand that, we're saying we have those three months to make a big difference. So then when we come back, for those who have not been vaccinated, because I've said that many times over the last few days, 75% of the cases are with people that are not vaccinated. So if we don't want this to happen in, in September, let's make sure you get vaccinated. And we have this opportunity. We have millions of vaccines that are available, and we have all the vaccination centers that are available. So I think this is what we need to make sure that we don't uh, have an impact on our hospitals, on our uh, on our full network, and I think that's a respect of uh, of the population in general. That's what we hope. Merci beaucoup. Alors, euh, je ne sais pas s'il y a d'autres médias anglophones dans la salle. Merci. Je vous invite à, à aller au micro. Good afternoon, Amanda Klein with CTV. Uh, probably for Dr. Aruda, this question. People who might be on the fence who got a first dose of AstraZeneca and who are saying, oh, should I get an AstraZeneca or should I get a, a mRNA? What's your advice uh, to those people? I think it's a very personal question, you know. It depends uh, if you had a first dose of AstraZeneca and things went right with no much side effect you could stay with AstraZeneca. But if you would like to have a mixed calendar where there is some hypothesis of better protection, perhaps, but you want to uh, understand that you will probably have more side effects or have like a flu for two days and stay at bed, it could happen. It could be okay too. So that's, that's really a personal choice. I think the two, the two are good. Uh, and some prefer to change for different reasons, and some prefer to stay with the same one. And on the issue of um, the age group 18 to 39, mm -hmm. one in three Quebecers, you yourself said uh, that that's quite a few people. Mm -hmm. um, I think the people who uh, have not yet been vaccinated are very strong in their convictions at this point. This is not a new campaign. It's been going on for a long time. So you're saying those close to those people should try to convince them. Is there anything else uh, that might entice um, those who haven't been vaccinated to be vaccinated, like the vaccine passport, for example, or what? what is, I feel like there needs to be a, maybe more incentive that hasn't been spoken about yet? But that's a good point. And that's the reason the, the issue of the passport and traveling to me is one key advantage. We... Um, 
And that's the reason we have this portal that we will launch tomorrow to make sure that we have all the right information on the people that have been vaccinated. It's not that the information that we have is wrong, it's that we don't have a complete information on them. Once we have settled that, to me it will take about two weeks, two, three weeks to make sure that we have all people. Then we can deal with the federal government and say, those are the people that have right now either one or second dose. And when we can switch to the, the passport, the official passport, which is being delivered by the federal the federal government, this will be a tremendous advantage for those people that have two doses to start being able to travel. So to me, that's the first big advantage. Now, secondary or auxiliary advantages are that maybe you don't have to do the quarantine at the hotel. You can just uh, make the proof of your vaccination or just do one test PCR. So but we will elaborate those advantages in the coming weeks, but just especially for younger people that want to travel in the next few months, I would say the best thing is to get those two doses as quickly as possible. Merci. Merci. Good afternoon. Is the Delta variant on the rise in Quebec uh, as it is in the rest of the country? And is more testing for this variant being done? Yes, there is more testing. Actually, I would say that it's not rising as high and as fast as what have been observed, um, especially because the numbers are low and especially because we are contact tracing very uh, clearly those kind of things, but it doesn't mean it can change. So we are going to follow it. We're going to make sure that the tests are done. We're going to make sure that uh, any cases that have been in contact with people coming from other provinces or countries that could have this kind of uh, a variant be well taken into account, well, well uh, uh, tested, well uh, quarantined, and making sure that the contacts also, that's going to be part of our strategy. But we're following that very clearly. And, and the other issue, which is the message of the day, get vaccinated to doses. <laughs> it's the best way to not uh, get that disease. And if you want to keep our liberties even for youths uh, or people who want to go to gyms and things like that at this fall, having two doses is going to be necessary. How worried should unvaccinated people be about the Delta variant? I think uh, they should be worried because uh, as compared to the other virus, there is more risk of uh, transmission to others and more risk to get hospitalized. Uh, actually, we are looking, it's too early to see the impact on death uh, because uh, there is transmission, but it's almost recent, but there is probably uh, at least getting hospitalized, it's more. It's, um, I think, over 33% more. So that means that probably one portion of them are going to die uh, because when you get hospitalized, it's because you have a more severe disease. But uh, I think as uh, COVID is not... Uh, easy disease, even if you can have uh, also COVID long, which is long COVID with symptoms, having troubles with uh, respiration. And I think that uh, two shots is nothing compared to the impact of the disease. Merci. Et maintenant, pour un dernier journaliste euh, en anglais, donc Cathy Sonnet de CBC. Good afternoon to everybody. Hello. Good afternoon. I was wondering if you had the time uh, and the chance to listen to the speech of the British uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson when he said a few hours ago that he had to postpone part of his reopening uh, plan until the end of July. Um, is it useful for you to have this warning coming from the UK? In fact, we are following, uh, I would say, the data of UK every day. 
looking at cases and hospitalization, it's very difficult for us to exactly know what is good or not. They are their own epidemiology. They uh, look at their situation. I think that if that decision has been taken, it's because they have the rate of transmission, which is high. And the only way, if they cannot catch and contain those cases, is to limit, the, the, I would say, the contacts between people. And that's probably what is their decision, because they probably don't want to have a big acceleration with pressure on healthcare systems and on the system. So I think it's, it's OK. Uh, I hope our two-dose vaccination will permit us to be, uh, I would say, in a way that we can continue to go to more, uh, I would say, uh, uh, more uh, uh, suplice on our measures. But at the same time, we will always look at the epidemiology. I think uh, we get a plan. We are very happy that even our steps are going faster epidemiologically than what we suspect. I think most of the regions will pass to green, uh, I hope, on 28th of June, but we will follow. For me, the issue is get vaccinated to those before the end of August and follow up what is going to happen in September and October. So we will not go blind uh, this way. We will check everything and, uh, and adjust and react based on epidemiology as we always did before. Is it me, uh, or I have the impression that uh, um, the possibility of a fourth wave is uh, more clear in your mind, uh, Mr. Dubé? Well, I, I think the way we act, if, if I may, uh, and I appreciate this question, I think the, the question is not would there be one or not, as we were asking ourselves, there be one second wave or a third wave. I think the way it's happening in the world, and I think there is only, I think, 30% of the world population that is vaccinated. And the, with the world traveling, how much pressure uh, a region like Quebec or a country like Canada or United States will have pressure of those of the world? I think we, we need to be conscientious that there will be pressure to potentially have a, th a fourth wave. The one thing that we do control is really how we are vaccinated. So the more we are vaccinated, the more we are able to face whatever will happen, if that's a fourth wave, at the height it will have, we will be at least to be very well protected. So to me, the question is not if, but say if it does happen, we, will, we want to make sure that we have, we have told the Quebecers to be protected. That's what we have the opportunity to do in the next three months. And lucky enough, contrary to other countries, we have the vaccine to do it. So, and, and I would say maybe I, I was telling somebody the expression, if you have the opportunity today to take an insurance against something and that insurance company is telling you that it's free, why refuse taking the insurance? That's exactly the opportunity that the Quebecers have in the next three months. Take an, an insurance on your health. This insurance is available and it's free and let's be ready for whatever happens next fall. That's our way of looking at it. C'est ce qui met fin au point de presse. Merci à tous d'avoir été présents aujourd'hui. Merci tout le monde. Merci beaucoup.